ladies and gentlemen, as Lars already mentioned, it's a very, very important issue. Important not only because of the pressures that we do face from the ecological disaster, the, tr the uh, crisis around us, but also important because a number of us Christians are still grappling with the whys and the hows and the whats of the whole issue. The biblical mandate to rule and have dominion that has caused all of the disaster, colonialism, capitalism, all of these. He talked about our Christian arrogance. He talked about our Christian anthropocentricity. All of these made some of us theologians begin to wonder whether Lynn White Jr. was right. And today we Christians are able to look at the environment crisis, the ecological crisis, and see how it is we need to you know, address the issue. Our first speaker this afternoon is a man who's made a mark. Sir John Houghton, obviously if he's Sir, he should have some kind of substance in him. Sir John Houghton, a physicist, a longtime academic, holds some high credentials here with us to share in the opening. As an Englishman, as a Britisher, you're the opening batsman, Sir John. So come out. Hit a few sixes. Thank you, Ken. The opening batsman has to, has to bear the, the, the most severe bowling in a normal <laughs> way. So we'll wait for the bowling later on, maybe. I have some slides. And um, you'll see the first one there in front of you, just the title. And um, let me plunge straight in, because I would like to just talk a little bit about science. And um, just a very simple point at the, uh, the start. You listen to some scientists these days, they try to tell you that um, God doesn't exist, and science is the only story. That, of course, is not true. We all know it's not true. Um, where do the laws of nature come from? What do we do when we do science? We discover what's there. We haven't invented it. Scientists aren't that clever. Scientists aren't the creators. And there are lots of scientists who, of course, will want to believe or want to believe in an intelligence behind the universe, as Einstein talked about years ago. And, um, but they're not quite sure who, who this creator is. Well, we know more than that, of course. We know, we know that God is the creator, and therefore we know that the science we do is God's science. Just let me tell you, a few, uh, mention a few things about the basic science of, of climate change, because that's my main theme in this afternoon. Others will be talking about other environmental issues. Right at the basis of our understanding of why the Earth is warming up is the greenhouse effect. It's been known for 200 years. Radiation comes in from the sun. It warms the Earth's surface. We're well aware of that. And uh, that energy coming in has to be balanced by energy going out. Energy leaves the Earth's surface in the infrared part of the spectrum. You can't see it, but you can feel it. And it goes out to space, or some of it goes out to space. But quite a lot of that energy is actually absorbed by the atmosphere, greenhouse gases as they're called, water vapor, carbon dioxide and so on, which are in the atmosphere, and they keep the atmosphere warmer, the Earth warmer than it would otherwise be. They're like a blanket over the Earth's surface. And because of that blanketing, we have a temperature on Earth which is which is conducive and which we are well used to and have been used to for centuries as human beings, which has helped us with our human lives. But now there's one of these gases, carbon dioxide. Uh, that shows you the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere over the last 10,000 years. Or, and it goes much beyond that, of course, in the past. But over the last 200 years, it's grown very rapidly. And why? 
because we're burning coal and oil and gas. There is no doubt at all that that increase is for that reason. And because the amount of carbon dioxide is going, going up, the blanket is getting thicker and the earth is getting warmer. Now, how much warmer is it getting? That's a, a, a shot at the average temperature on Earth, the global average temperature over the last 500 or 1,500 years or so. And um, it's kept a fairly steady amount within about half a degree either way, half a degree Celsius either way. It is now going up in, uh, unusually. Its rate of increase over the last 50 years has been particularly noticeable. And we've studied this very carefully as scientists, and we believe that increase fits rather well with what we expect from the increase in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. And that if we carry on for the rest of the century, then the average temperature will continue to rise and become perhaps between 2 and 6 degrees warmer uh, on Earth than it has been for a long time. Well, you may say that's uh, what's global temperature, a bit warm, and what's the matter with that? What are the main impacts of this climate change is going to have on the Earth and human beings? Just three things. We'll get more intense heat waves, <coughs> we'll get sea level rise, and we'll have a more intense hydrological cycle. First of all, heat waves in Central Europe in 2003. There was a massive heat wave. Very, nothing like it had ever been experienced before in Europe. The temperature went up to well over 40 Celsius in many European cities and over 20,000, possibly 30,000 people died prematurely because of that. So that was a very serious issue and those who've studied it from the climate point of view say that most of the risk of that event was this increasing bl blanketing that comes from greenhouse gases. Sea level rise. You'll notice it, of course, in Cape Town, but to go to Bangladesh, there's the one, two, three, and four, five meter contours. The land is very low, it's very fertile land. Of course, people like living there because it's good agricultural land. And 10 million people live below the one meter contour. Now, as the oceans warm, the water expands and the sea level rises. There's no doubt about that bit of physics either. And we're expecting something of the order of half a meter sea level rise for that reason by the end of this century. So where are those people in Bangladesh going to go? There are people in the audience from Papua New Guinea. They know very well what's happening to some of the islands in the Pacific Ocean, and people can't live there anymore and have to go somewhere. 25 million people in southern China, and so on around the world. That's a very serious issue, which we, have, we will all, everybody in the world, will have to do something about. There's a Bangladeshi family running from a flood which came because of a flood on the rivers. But you can see the sort of problems that people like that are going to have. And then what's going to happen about rainfall in our uh, water, water in our uh, globally warmed world? Well, that's uh, an estimate as to what the changes in rainfall will be by the end, towards the end of the century. The red, red regions are drier by up to 30%. The blue regions are wetter than up to, uh, up to about 30%. Big changes in water availability, which is going to be very serious for, we depend on water so much, very serious from people in many parts of the world. Um, but particularly in climate extremes. When water vapor comes into the atmosphere because it's evaporated from the ocean surface, um, of course, the ocean's warmer, so there's more water, water vapor in the atmosphere coming now because of global warming. And that means more rainfall on average. We're me measuring that increased rainfall on average at the moment. It's happening. But when water vapor enters the atmosphere and the, and the vapor condenses as droplets in clouds, heat is released, energy is released. It's called latent heat, if you know that word from your old physics of school, and that's a lot of energy. And that's putting more energy into the atmosphere's circulation. In fact, it's the largest single source of energy. Energy from that source is the largest single source of energy for the atmosphere's circulation. And that means that we're going to get, tend to get more droughts and more floods. Now, the most severe 
disasters we know on Earth. They cause more misery, more deaths, more economic loss than any others. So more of them is really bad news. There's a picture of drought in Africa, which is happening, which is more common, and the droughts are lasting longer. We know about the floods which are going in Pakistan at the moment. And that may not in itself be largely due to global warming. We don't know because we've had floods before. But we're going to get more of them, and they're going to be more intense. In fact, the best estimates made by scientists are that by the middle of the century, it's likely that floods and droughts will tend, the risk of them will tend to go up by about a factor of five. And that is very bad news indeed. The church should be seizing the opportunity because the world is desperate for leadership. And there we have a picture of the fragile earth, more fragile than we once thought, possibly. And we have to do something about it. Thank you very much.